Hello everyone, welcome to Data Engineer YouTube channel. In this video, we will be talking about web activities in Azure Data Factory. So generally, whenever we, you know, in websites also, if we are using a REST API, what we do is, we send a request to the server and the server give us a response, right? Same way, uh, we can use REST API in Azure Data Factory also. So let's talk about, let's go to the documentation first and then we will be doing the practical part. All right. So uh, let me cover the main thing. So this will be covered in theory part. So let us see what were data types or what, uh, you know, type of request and, uh, you know, sending and receiving body you can have in your API. So let's talk about that first. All right. Let me just go down. All right. Just a moment. All right, so yeah, here it is. So if we talk about the, you know, value type, so if we talk about JSON object, so it is supported in the sending part also, and in the receiving part also of the API, it's supported. Whereas if we talk about JSON array and JSON value, it's supported at the request body, but for the response body, it's not supported. That means you can send the API request uh, using, you know, by putting JSON array or JSON value, but the response should always and always be a JSON object and non-JSON type is not supported in Azure Data Factory. So you can use REST API, but with the limitation that it should not be non-JSON, right? Now, talking about the authentication, so you can, you know, based on the REST API, whatever authentication you have for your REST API, you can definitely use it. So without authentication also, if your uh, API is an open API, definitely without authentication also you can use that API. So now uh, obviously uh, to perform the practical we need a REST API. So I have chosen a REST API which is restcountries.com. So this uh, website have a REST API which give uh, you know the information about the countries or you can say about the geography. So let's use this uh, you know open REST API to do our practical part. Now I have a data factory uh, you know DE data factory prod I'll be using it. So firstly, I'll go to author. I'll be creating a pipeline by clicking on the plus icon. I'll create a pipeline. Uh, once I have created a pipeline, uh, what I will do is I'll search for the web activity. Now, once I drag and drop it, I will see multiple parameters at the bottom. Now let's talk about these parameters one by one. All right. So these are the basic parameters. So name, you can give any name, uh, description. You can give any description, whatever you want based on what type of request you are going to send uh, to the server. Then further, if you talk about activity status, uh, you know, uh, it's still a preview feature. It's a very generic feature. So you'll see it in multiple activities. So basically, whether you want to, you know, uh, deactivate an activity or whether you want to exclude it or not. So based on that, you can set the parameter not required for us. So timeout, uh, you know, by how, after how many seconds or hours, it should timeout. How many times it should retry? Uh, let's say for the single time it got failed. Uh, then, you know, how much times you want this REST API to be called, right? So, what should be the interval between them? So, very simple, right? And now we have two options called secure output and secure input. So, what happens is uh, whenever you are debugging, so the logs are generated, right? Now, if you say secure output and secure input, it will not you know, send the data, whatever you are sending as a JSON, uh, you know, uh, as a request or the response, it will not be saving in your log file. So, if you will uh, tick on secure, it will not be logging that particular data. That's it. Now, uh, very generic uh, options, right, which you can see in all the activities almost. Now, this is the main thing, which we go to settings. Now, in settings, we have something called URL, where we will be providing the REST API URL. So let me go to REST countries and let me see any one of the REST API. Okay. Uh, uh, let me see a very generic one. Okay. So I have something called REST countries. Let me just copy it and let me paste and see what kind of JSON it have. Okay. So if I uh, paste it in URL, so I can see it's related to some uh, flags. So the flag of Saudi Arabia, something, something. So this is the response we want. So what we will do is it's an open API. No authentication is required. What I will do is I will simply copy. I have already copied this URL. I will be pasting it over here in the URL section. 
uh, method. So I just want to get the data. So it's a get request. Just like in simple API, we have the request, like we have get request, post request, same way we have here also. And then now, yeah, because it's an open API, I have no authentication. Uh, but if your API requires authentication, definitely you can select multiple kind of authentication based on whatever you want. You can authenticate using a service principle, you can authenticate using basic username and password and so on based on your requirement you can choose right now there are also standard apis so we have power bi rest apis which are very standard so you obviously you can use that apis also so what based on your requirement whatever rest api you want to use you can use but there is a limitation also that you know not more than 10000 so there is a data limit uh, which you can check like after that particular data limit so uh, in one API call, you, are, you know, it should not exceed a particular data limit. So you can check it out. Now, let us call this REST API. So it's fine, I guess. And I don't want any user property. Let me just click on debug and see what happens. Okay, so once I click on debug, all right. So let me see the output, okay. So it succeeded. So my input was a REST API. So this was a URL, it's a GET method. I have no headers. That means uh, I have no authentication because it was an open REST API. Now, if I see the output, the response from the server, let's check it out by clicking here. So, just see the same JSON data which you can see once you go here. So, you will be able to see this data. Now, the question is where this kind of REST APIs can be used. So, that's a main question which everyone must have, right? So let's say you have a website from wherein you want to pull the data. You uh, you can use this REST API. Like you can uh, call the you know you can call the REST API. You can uh, you know pull the data from the website and you can just dump it into parquet files or you want to serve, you know dump it into a SQL server. You can do that. So that is number one use case. Number two use case can be like uh, just for example Power BI have very very different REST kind of REST APIs. So you can definitely execute those REST APIs using ADF, right? And other miscellaneous things also you can do using this REST API. I hope you found this video useful and you got to know how basically REST API activity, uh, you know, is uh, basically used in Azure Data Factory. Thank you.